Hello everybody, welcome back to Red Tool House. On today's video, we're going to continue our fence that's going to surround our garden to keep it deer proof. That is the plan, that is the goal. Um, only time will tell to see how proof that is. So uh, a couple weeks ago, Cam and I finished this section of what I call our sexy fence part that's more visible from the three people that show up once a year to see this place. So, you know, you gotta keep the place looking nice. Uh, but it's, it's more of our decorative fence, still does what it needs to. But as we come around here, the, around the back where our tree line is, and then going up, on up to the chicken church, because we want to tie all this together, we're going to switch from the timber and cattle panels, not only because it's uh, going to be cheaper and, and less time to set all that up, but we're also going to have to start dealing with a lot of curves and a lot of undulation and terrain, and that style of fence just isn't going to work cleanly. So starting right here, this post, we're going to come around this curve. You can kind of see my comfrey is kind of the edge of the border there. And we're going to come around and go right up this tree line. And then up there where you see the uh, little retaining wall that the uh, some of the hens are in front of, taking advantage of that shade, we're going to turn and go toward the chicken church. So the plan is to use four by two welded wire, which if you've ever seen four by two, it's you buy it in the big rolls. So here's some we have left over. So it's four by two. So you can see four inches tall, two inches wide. And yeah, that keeps most of your critters out. Now, only a little rabbit can squeeze through moles, chipmunks, all that jazz. Not that big a deal of what we're dealing with. But we're also, we're gonna, we do have an, an option for that with a single strand of electric along the bottom. But what we're working with is just six foot T posts. And six foot T posts are, are probably the tallest that are still affordable. You can get up into the eight foot T posts and those get a little ridiculous as far as expense goes. But we know that six foot T post driven in the ground about a foot, maybe just a cat's whisker under, isn't gonna give you that height that's gonna keep deer from jumping over. So we're gonna modify those and try to get a much, much taller fence, cheaper than going out and buying eight foot or taller T-posts. So come along. So along that back section of fence where we stop with our wood fence and cattle panel, all the sexy stuff, and we move over to more utilitarian type fencing, we're gonna to switch to T-posts. And I've got these six foot T-posts that once driven in the ground, of course, hang out around five, four and a half feet, depending on how far you drive them in. Well, that's not going to be enough height to really deter a deer from jumping in. We need to go higher. So we want to modify these T-posts in a way that we can go up another three feet. So the plan will be eight feet plus uh, by the time we, we do our modifications. So it's going to involve a little bit of welding. That's why I'm down here. Got my welder out, out here in front of the shop. And I've got some stock that we're going to weld. And I'll show you what the plan is. We'll go ahead and put one together so you can see what it looks like. And all of you guys that are really welders, you can laugh and make comments and and um, yeah, just, just poke fun at me for my poor welding skills. But all I'm trying to do is get it to hold. I'm not trying to win any sexy welding prizes. But let me get the first one uh, done and I can show you what we're doing. We obviously got to get some paint off of this so I can get a good clean weld.
<laughs> All right, so as you saw there, just three simple tack welds. Ugly, ugly tack welds. I'm using gas, um, using gasless wire feed, so it splatters like crazy. But I'm cheap. I can't. I haven't gone out to buy my uh, 100, 200 uh, dollar can or tank of argon yet. All right. So the idea with this, what we're using here, probably should help if I showed you what we're using. I'm using a half inch square stock. And I actually got this at one of the local box stores. The Big L and the Big HD both have those. Uh, right now, $12 for a 30-inch um, piece or 36-inch piece. A little crazy. But is what it is right now. So this square stock, the reason why I chose it is simply the inside diameter is what I'm looking for. And the reason why is we're going to be using step-in posts. Now, this one's broken off. Uh, but it's my tester so the step in post has a 3 8 inch shank or point that goes into the ground well the half inch square stock it just happens to have an inside dimension that works fine so when we go to drop it in here she slides in easy so you can see that basically is just making a little collar or a little sleeve for that to fall into so when we go to drive this T-post in the ground, we can then drop the step-in post in, and it's going to be nice and rigid, It'll be very, very flexible, or very, very rigid in place. And then we can have that additional step-in post that are three uh, feet tall. So that gives us, my weld helmet keeps moving down on me. <laughs> Here we go. That gives us that extra height that we can then run poly twine or tape or wire or whatever we're going to do. I think we're going to go with poly twine so it has a more visibility. So as you can see with this welded up like that, just a couple, just a simple couple hits of weld. I had to, um, I had to of course grind off some of the paint and we'll go back and touch that up with some paint so it doesn't rust out. But that should hold the point of that step in post super clean and still allow me to drive the post, drive the T-post in with my driver because it'll be it'll be out of the way. You can see the low profile. Well, let me turn it there. The low profile of that half inch square stock doesn't stick out in the point where it's going to interfere with my you know, my fence post clanger, the uh, the driver that you have. That's a kind of a piece of pipe with handles on it to drive it down. So when we get, I'm going to get all these modified. I'm going to try to do. Um, I think I've got 20 to do. So we get all these modified and then. When we go to put them in the ground, we'll detail that even more. All right, so driving the T-posts in, the good thing about this small square stock, of course, is it has a low profile. So as you saw with the fence post driver, I can drive that down without any obstruction, as long as the weld's hold. And then, of course, coming back with a step-in post. Just put that in place. So the plan will be, as we go around, And those step in posts, of course, give us the height we need to deter a deer from jumping. So we're looking at about a little over eight feet there. Now, I know a deer can jump higher than that if they're really forced to, or they're all riled up to do so. But we also have the advantage of they have to come uphill. So that makes that height even more of an issue for them to clear. If they were coming downhill, no big deal. If they were running flat, no big deal to get over. But with this coming uphill, that really takes away from their little leg mechanical advantage to jump over. So we'll be able to put polytwine here on that. And of course our welded that we're going to start stretching now.
Can I have this language here? Okay. Yeah. Are there different sizes that you're saving for different? Those are heavy. Can you carry those up there? Right there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Want oh. more? No, not yet. Maybe all we need. Well, that's a clean living. <laughs> It's too much to take. There's too much dogness going no. on around here. <laughs> Timber! <laughs> oh my goodness. Lost his doggy mane. He's like, everybody's down on my level, man. Time to play. So, all right, so we've got all of our fence in on the back side. So you can see all the way down there at the end of the wooden fence, you have T post, comes all the way up, makes a turn and comes here and stops. I gotta cut this excess off. What we're going to do is from this T post to that T post will be an opportunity, a gate. I haven't quite figured out exactly what I'm gonna use for a gate just yet, but something I can take down easily 
so I can bring the tractor in with a bucket of wood chips or back the trailer in with a side-by-side -side to dump wood chips here to fill in, of course, you know, the, the run that the chickens can continue to churn and turn all that. We are in dire need of wood chips. It's gone way too long, so it looks like the surface of the moon right now. And every single one of these T-posts have my welded component on so I can put step-in posts in. So by the time we go put all those step-in posts in and run two strands of poly wire, then we should be in really good shape to keep the deer out. Knock on wood. Um, that's what I'm banking on. We'll see how it goes. I've got a couple places I need to fill in. Um, that's one issue. That's where I envy you flatlanders when it comes to putting fence out on flat land. It, it doesn't take half a day like it does here. It usually goes a little quicker. So um, I'm going to show you how we have to fill in these gaps and how I'm going to use uh, some X bracing with wire to tighten up these T-posts as tight as possible. So in this fence project, you probably noticed that the welded wire is used. It's, it's not a brand new roll. Uh, we're obviously trying to recycle, reuse, and save money. And this is from the previous chicken configuration I had, the 10,000 square foot two runs where I was trying to do stuff there. Didn't like the way that worked out, taking too much flat land for what I was running the chicken tractors on, so all that came out. But I collected and saved all of this. What I didn't realize is that this is also stuff that we had used in the garden over the last couple years. So some of it's, you know, you've got vines that have grown around it, and then some have holes in it. I don't know if that's coming, showing up in the camera there. And so some of those have just had holes blown out. And what that's from, that's when Kelly would be in the garden doing stuff and she'd get mad because she'd find a turtle in there eating something, so she'd fling it through the fence. And that's how, uh, how those holes got there. So anyway. What we had to do with this fence is break it up into sections. So you can see this section, while it may look flat, actually has a bit of a downhill slope. So there's a gap here at the bottom. We'll, we'll put some large logs in. Uh, to pile stuff up against and kind of be a catch. In fact, that's where a lot of water drains. So I want to dam that up, slow that water down so a lot of our nutrient doesn't wash away. And so just these three step-in posts are a section of fence by themselves. And then all of those are a section of fence up into the corner and then a new section of fence. So we are cutting, we are cutting that welded wire up. But you can see this step is pretty dramatic from here up to there. So we left those open and we're going to cut we're going to cut patches or sections of fence and to put them in diagonal to take that up. So it's not the cleanest install, but that's the best we can do on these steep slopes. But we're also going to do some X bracing with wire here because I don't know if you can tell when we pull this welded wire tight, then those end T posts kind of get a gangster lean to them. So we need, to, we need to get those tight and that'll even help make that fence even tighter. Got these gaps filled and you can see the angle that they're on and then just took some wire here to do some X bracing to tighten those up and did the same on this other transition here and then just did a little bit of horizontal wire there because that one was leaning that way and that was leaning that way so it allowed me to tighten those up so we're secure to about four feet Five feet counting our fancy fence uh, about uh, what is that three quarters away around the garden and I've got I think I've got about 12 stepping posts I need to get some more but I'm gonna put those in place and uh, we'll have to invest in some additional ones All right, so we've got all those in there, and uh, of course no polytwine yet. We're not going to put the polytwine in yet until we figure out how we're going to be able to come around on the top of our, our fancy fence side. 
but all those are in place and actually came up one short and I can actually rob that from somewhere else. We've got some in the front landscaping there that I can grab, not have to go buy additional ones. But uh, that, should, that should get us covered. I skipped two here simply because they were so close together um, that I know I could just span that. I didn't have, uh, I didn't even use my modified T-post there because I know that those would uh, be something I could pass over with a polytwine. Shouldn't be a problem there. The chickens are, uh, <clears throat> they don't like it when I'm around. They get so spooked that they fly out. So that's why I see some of them hanging out outside the poly netting. But it's going to be nice to have this in permanently. Be a little bit taller that they're not going to be jumping out all the time. And stay where they need to be to be making mulch with all the wood chips and compost and all the stuff that they're going to be doing there. Next is the work on the point from the front of the chicken church down here to what I call our cut. And then build a gate area there to tile that in because we still want to be able to pull the side by side in here if we need to because of course we'll be doing a bunch of composting here uh, so we want to be able to still get a vehicle in here and of course even the mobile coop in the winter time like we did this time so let's keep trucking all right so a couple days have passed we're coming back out here to finish the front so if we get this taken care of then we'll basically have the garden and the chicken church all fenced off minus you know the gates that i need to do which that will be another video because I'm still trying to figure those out. But we've got five T-posts set here that go down to the greenhouse, starting here at the corner of the church. You know, the plan, of course, is to eventually completely eliminate the poultry netting. So once we get all this done, this all goes away. And the, you know, the fence, the gate will be here. The point of having a gate here is to be able to back in with the trailer side by side to put wood chips on this side. And of course, we'll be able to put wood chips and grass cuttings on that side. So that's what we did. Kelly and the boys cut the grass the other day and we took all the extra grass clippings and put them down here. So it gives the chicken something to hang out, enjoy, scratch around. And uh, then of course, that gets churned with their manure and you see it's working down the hill. I actually dumped all the grass clippings right here. When was that Kel, just two days ago you cut the grass? Yeah, or yesterday? Yeah. Th yeah, so Thursday, today's Saturday. So we dumped everything right here in a big pile. And just in the course of two days, you can see how they've spread it all the way down. So that's the plan is they, they scratch, they use gravity to move it down. They're pooping, they're mixing it, they're stirring it. Um, it looks like we're gonna need to put some barriers in there to kind of slow it down so it doesn't move as fast uh, down to the bottom. But uh, we'll get this fence in and uh, see how that goes. Well, it was cracked, I threw, and it didn't bust, so it rolled all the way down. You just gotta get everything, don't you? Insulator eater. You're an insulator eater, aren't you? Alright. Rolling on the wheel. Ow, ow, ow. Put mm. your fingers here, hold this, and I'll roll it. <laughs> Move to the mountains, they say. You'll love it. It's fun. It's been wrong on all accounts. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't get it for two flat acres. Oh, down the hill here. Right. right on the dog's head. somebody hadn't broken the tab on the fourth one, then we'd have five stepping posts in place. Huh? We got a bit of a warp to it. 
All right, so with this in place, we use the fall down the hill. This in place, this is our deer barrier. So we don't want deer coming over. Inside, we're gonna do a V-shaped fence with some wood slabs as a funnel that will funnel down to our compost collection. So that's gonna create these little triangles here and one over by the maple tree that I'm kind of calling no man's land. So deer won't have access to it. Chickens won't have access to it. So that makes it a perfect spot for some perennials. We'll probably transplant some of our Chinese wine berries, maybe our thornless blackberries, maybe a blueberry or two, something like that. Put a perennial in here uh, in some, some raised beds or even some terraces. So just imagine from, well, from about right here, this T post, and we'll have an angle, a fence going that way, down to the cut, and then a, a matching one on that side. So that'll be our V that the chickens hang out in. And then this area here will be no man's land, no deer, no chicken. So um, we're not quite there yet. Got to get our gate closed in from that last T post to the corner of the greenhouse. But now, as you can see, all the way around, all the way around our fancy fence to all the white step-in posts all the way around behind the chicken church and then here at the front corner of the chicken church where there will be a gate to here all the way back down to the greenhouse that this will be our deer barrier and then we'll of course put electric along the bottom all the way two strands of electric at the bottom with uh, insulator sticking out to deter raccoon possum, those type of things from trying to get in and obviously lay harm to our chickens. So I'm going to get the uh, poultry netting just kind of lined out so tonight they'll be able to have uh, more room and, and still be a functional area, but we're close. As soon as I get the gates done, we're close to being able to uh, close all this in, take the poultry netting out, and be ready to go. I think Cam's going to start painting the chicken church here since the weather's turned nice, so we'll get that taken care of as well like to have had more done on this video, but uh, you know, it's just the way things go. This week, as far as my uh, health concerns have gone, have been uh, up and down. So it's been about half good days, half bad days. So you work on a good day and you lay in a ball and cry on a bad day, right, Kill? <laughs> so, uh, so we'll catch up um, next week with some additional updates and um, we'll see you guys then. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Take care.